the second part of um, this chapter is going to be looking at climate and then hopefully putting it all together uh, in terms of understanding the interaction of climate and weather. One thing that we'll look at this week is using a climate classification system. The, the system we're going to use is called the Köppen climate classification system and it's probably one of the more widely used systems because it's very easy to understand and it's really looking at the amount of uh, solar radiation, different air masses, pressure systems, um, rainfall, that kind of thing. So it, it's uh, it's kind of straightforward. And so um, typically three different letters are used. Uh, one letter is kind of the general type, climate type so that A is a tropical climate and then they talk about precipitation um, so like oh I think it's AM is a monsoonal climate um, AF is tropical rainforest and so um, I've provided a PDF of this uh, example that you can use in your in your assignment this week to try to identify um, what the climate classification is um, and so um, we'll use those terms um, and then uh, there's a table of kind of the generalized types and, and where you might find these. So um, tropical climates um, or rainforest climates, there's also savanna where you're kind of, you have wet and dry seasons, but they're not quite like monsoons because a monsoon you need six months of rainfall to be a, a monsoon. And then we're going to look at just the different um, climate extremes with each of these. So one way to understand climate is the use of what's called a climograph and depending on whether you're in the UK or the US it could be spelled with an O or an A. Anyway, um, there is a website that you'll be looking at this week um, that has different climographs. And so this is a climograph of Salt Lake City, Utah. And you can see on the US map, I've circled where I pulled that climograph from. And what this shows you is the precipitation in bars. So you see how many inches of rainfall over the year. And then you see the average, this is the day and night average, um, of temperature over over the year. So there's a couple things um, that you can look at to understand a climograph. So one of the things you can see is that most of the rainfall in uh, Salt Lake comes in the spring, March, April, May. Um, in the summer months, so that's your highest insulation, your highest temperature is in the summer. June, July, August is, is the uh, northern hemisphere summer and that has the least amount of rainfall and the highest temperatures um, and I also know that this is in the northern hemisphere if I didn't give you this map you would know this is a northern hemisphere uh, site because the highest temperature is in June and July um, if this were in the southern hemisphere, the highest temperatures would be in January, February, November, December. You'd have almost an inverse of this temperature graph. So if I look at um, a climograph uh, on the equator, one of the things you're going to see is that the temperature bar is very steady. It doesn't go up and down and this is a result of being equatorial. So this is another clue where you are in the world and there's the circle um, of uh, Caracas, Venezuela. So here a lot more rainfall when compared to um, Salt Lake City. Um, you can see that there it does have a dry period so if I'm going to go visit here I am going in January, February or March um, and there is kind of their, their wet season. This is probably some kind of tropical. Let me click back to the classification system and I'm looking at one of these blue so it looks like it is uh, AW or AM AF. I don't think it's AF we could go back here and look. Um, maybe. Yeah, so this could be tropical rainforest, although it, it could also be uh, tropical. I don't think it's monsoon. Well, I don't know. 
We'd have to look and see. Six months of rain, one, two, three, four, five. Well, maybe it's tropical monsoon. You'd have to look that up. Um, so a lot of information you can grab from these climographs. So here is uh, a climograph taken from Buenos Aires. And you can see what I was talking about. Their coldest month is June and July. So where in the globe? is there less insulation in June and July. That's only in the Southern Hemisphere. And you can see a lot more rainfall, except in the summer, that's their dry time of year. So again, if I looked at, let's see if I can find that on the, uh, so if I look at, it's probably around in here. So this is one of these sea climates. So it might be, you have to pull out the big map so you can actually see what this is. Uh, CB looks like it is uh, a maritime climate. Okay, that would make sense. So it's being impacted uh, by the the water off the coast, and that would be kind of an, a maritime climate. So this week, um, I'm. Whoops. Let me hold that here. So this week, your assignment is going to be to create a formal report on um, an extreme temperature event. And I'm going to send each of you um, the name of a place and a date that you will do some research uh, that will give you, um, and most of this information is readily available on Google. And you're going to look up um, this extreme event um, all of the extreme events were gotten were uh, taken from this uh, uh, Creed website, um, and we're talking about heat waves, these extended periods of heat. Um, and you're going to use the internet and that country date to kind of get some information, um, and you're going to uh, submit um, a document to me. And so. What I want is a detailed summary of, of the event. When did it happen? Where did it happen? How long did it last? This is all Google kinds of stuff. Um, what were the temperatures? How many people were affected? How many people died? Uh, what were the causes of death? What were the ages? Anything you can find out to kind of summarize that, that uh, disaster. And then I want you to talk about what was the tip what is the typical climate of that area so you'll go to the um, map showing general air masses it's impacted by continental air mass it is in this uh, climate uh, area for the Köppen climate system and then you're going to describe that the general climate is uh, warm in the summer with eight with uh, temperatures from here to there. Um, is it being controlled by latitude? Is it being controlled by altitude? Is it the ITCZ? Is it continentality? What are those temperature effects that we've talked about in the past? How is that impacting this area? And then I want you to go to this website and include, let me move that up. Ah, hold on. Uh, I want you to include now it's going to maximize for me. OK. Um, this website will take you. Oh, maybe this will work. Shall I try that? Ooh. Yeah, let me try that. I'm going to allow that. See if it'll work. Um, it's, yeah. OK, I'm going to bring this over here. You're going to go to this website, and if you have a city in the U.S., you're going to click U.S. If you have an international city, you're going to click an international city. And then let's just look at the one for me. Go to Buenos Aires. So the one I showed you before was here. I clicked here. And it gives me the climograph uh, for that area. It gives me uh, the temperature data and the precip data that was used to create that climograph. Um, gives me the latitude and longitude. Uh, and so what you're going to do is copy that climograph. And you're going to paste it into a Word document. And I have some directions. I'll move that. Um, about how to how to format your document. And then I want you to research what what can you find out that caused that 
uh, extreme temperature event and usually that will also be in your Google uh, in your Google search for that uh, you need to include um, any references that you have um, used and you can use an abbreviated reference form and so I gave you an example of the, the reference form um, here it is I referenced in in the beginning I referenced uh, this site ready and there's the website so I have you'll notice in the in the front of the document I have a parentheses around the number one um, that would bring you down to this website so I want you to document all the websites that you use to get your information um, and I have very detailed uh, directions for formatting if you don't format this way I, I will, you will not get credit for the report. Um, it needs to be double spaced, it needs to be a 12 point font, it needs to be some kind of normal font, um, Arial, Times New Roman, it can't be cutesy scripty stuff. It just needs to be something you would do for a professional document. You need one inch margins on all sides. Um, the climograph and any other uh, maps you want to put in have to be wrapped and cannot be distorted and there's a video um, on the on Moodle that talks about formatting you need to have the date and the name at the top um, and the title needs to be extreme heat report and then your the name of the city and uh, the date um, and then you must save the document uh, as um, your name and assignment three when you post it that way I'll be able to locate them um, much more easily. So uh, this looks like a lot more work than it is. I don't think it will be for you. The, the events that I'm giving you are were pretty horrific and I think you'll find the information uh, rather quickly. Okay, next week we get to talk about my favorite disasters, earthquakes and volcanoes.